In the previous lesson, we learned about session-based authentication. The current logged in user ID is stored within the session data and is used by the Laravel application to identify the current logged in user. But typically, session data and the session cookie expires after two hours of inactivity by default. In other words, if the user stops interacting with your application for two hours, the cookie will expire and the session data will expire. So in future requests from this user, the Laravel application won't be able to identify that the current user is logged in and will ask them to log in again. This is a security measure to protect your users from leaving an open session in a browser that other people may have access to and can use this open session to gain access to the user account to your application. But almost on every website on the internet, there is an option to allow the user to say, remember me on this computer. And when they check this checkbox, the application will remember their logged in session and will keep them logged in on this computer even after hours of inactivity. And Laravel ships with this functionality out of the box and it's pretty easy to use. Let me show you how to do that. Here we have the routes from the previous lesson and we only customize the welcome to play to PHP view by adding a remember me checkbox. If we go to the browser and visit localhost, we can see this newly added checkbox here. Now let's go to the auth controller and to enable the remember me functionality, we are going to add a second argument to the attempt method here. For the second argument, we are going to use the request helper and call the fill method. Then provide the name of the remember me checkbox, which is remember in our case. The filled method here will return true if the remember checkbox is checked and false otherwise. So the second argument of the attempt method will receive true or false based on whether the user checked the remember me checkbox or not. Now let's go to localhost and authenticate the user and check the remember me checkbox. Click login and we are redirected to the dashboard. Click refresh and we are still logged in. Now let's go to inspect element of the browser, check application and cookies, and let's remove the Laravel session cookie. When this cookie is removed, Laravel won't be able to identify the logged in user. That's the same thing that happens when the cookie expires on its own. If we refresh this, we should see the user logged out, but because we checked the remember me checkbox, it should stay logged in. So let's refresh and we can see that the user is still logged in and the session cookie was regenerated. The way this works under the hood is that Laravel sends a cookie that never expires along with the request with the login request and this cookie holds the current logged in user ID as well as generated remember me token. And a hashed version of this remember me token is stored inside the user's tuple inside the database. When Laravel detects that the session has expired, it's going to look for this remember me token. And if it finds this token, it will extract the user ID along with the hashed version of the along with the remember token. And it's going to compare the user ID with the hashed version of the remember token in the database. And if this matches, it's going to re-authenticate the user and regenerate the session that causes the Laravel app to detect that the current user is logged in. Now let's move to another form of authentication, which is token-based authentication. This form of authentication is useful for mobile applications, machine-to-machine -machine communication, and JavaScript applications that are hosted on a domain that's different from the domain of the main application. The idea is simple. Laravel generates a token with the credentials provided by the user and sends this token back as a response to the login request. The client, which is a browser or a mobile application or whatever, should take this token and store it somewhere and then send it with every request in the future to your application. The Laravel application will be able to extract this token from the request headers and be able to identify who the current logged in user is by identifying who this token belongs to. To use token-based authentication in Laravel, we need to use a first-party package maintained by the Laravel team called Laravel Sanctum. 
Now Sanctum is already included in every fresh Laravel application, so we should see it in our composer to JSON file. So if you go to phpstorm and visit composer.json, we can see that Laravel Sanctum is included in the required attribute of the file. This package adds a migration file that creates a personal access tokens table in the database, and it also has a configuration file. The package actually does more than just issuing authentication tokens. But in this lesson, we are only going or we are only interested in this part. So let's go ahead and switch to using token-based authentication. First, we'll go to the API.php routes file. It's located under routes API. And routes inside this file are meant for requests coming from clients that want to interact with the application via JSON rather than HTML. Typically, those are the clients that want to use token-based authentication. We're going to remove this default route from here and then add another route to log the users in. So we're going to use post and then slash login. The action for this route is post controller the login method. Now let's go to the auth controller and let's remove the show method because we won't use an HTML form in our case and clear the login method but leave the validation in place. Now we will use the email provided by the user to grab a user instance from the database. So we will create a user variable and call the user model where email equals the email coming from the request. And then we are going to call the first method. Now that we have the user instance, we will want to compare the given password with the hash stored in the user's table. If the hash matches, we are going to return an array with the token key. So to do that, we are going to start an if condition and call the hash facade and call the check method. For the first argument for the check method, we are going to pass the password that's coming from the request. And for the second argument, we are going to use the get auth password on the model instance. Now the check method will return true if the password matches the stored hash and false otherwise. So if it returns true, that means the credentials are correct and we were going to return a token. So here we are going to return an array with a token key. And then we are going to use the user variable and call the create token method. Now each token created should have a name. So in our case, we will name the token after the current timestamp. So we'll use the time built in PHP function. And after the token is created, we are going to want to return the plain text token. The client will need to store this plain text token somewhere in order to send it with other requests in the future. Now let's go to the HTTP client and send a POST request to the API slash login route. And in the headers, we are going to specify the content type header to application JSON and the accept header to application JSON as well. In the request body, we are going to provide the user credentials. So email Mohammed at laravel.com and password secret. Let's send the request and we can see the response here with the token provided. We will need to store this token somewhere in order to use it when future requests. Now let's create a protected route so we can test this token on. We will go to the api.php routes file and create a new route. We'll call this route dashboard and the route action will be the dashboard controller. And for this route, we will use the auth middleware. So middleware auth, just like we did with the session based authentication. However, we are going to provide an argument, which is sanctum. This tells the authentication middleware to authenticate the user using the sanctum guard instead of the default session guard. The sanctum guard understands how to authenticate users using the token based authentication. Now it's time we go to the dashboard controller and edit the controller action here. And instead of returning a view, we are not going to return a view. We are going to return an array with the data of the current logged in user. Now let's go back to the HTTP client and send a request to the localhost slash API slash dashboard route. 
and we can see a message indicating that the user is unauthenticated and that's because we are not sending the token so let's go and add another header authorization and provide the value of this header as peer and then paste the token we have from the request so now let's click send and we can see the response is 200 ok and the response contains the current logged in user and if we send any future request to the same protected route we will be able to authenticate the user because we are sending the authorization header with the token if we remove the value of the header and send the request we will get unauthenticated because the sanctum guard was not able to identify the token sent with the request now the remaining part is to create a logout route so let's go to the api.php routes file and create a new route called logout and the route action will be the logout method on the auth controller so let's go to the auth controller and clear the logout method from the previous lesson and then instead we are going to use the auth helper get the user instance of the current logged in user and call current access token which gives us the current access token from the request and then call delete this will delete the token from the database so the laravel app won't be able to identify this token in future requests and will consider the user unauthenticated now let's go to the http client and send a post request to the logout route and we get an error because we forgot in the api.php route we need to implement the sanctum authentication middleware as well in order for the laravel app to be able to identify the current logged in user and be able to return the current access token so now let's go to insomnia and send the request and we can see that the response is now okay now if we send another request a get request to the dashboard route which is the protected route and even though we are including the authorization token here and if we send we get unauthenticated because we visited the logout route and the token was removed from the database and as i said earlier sanctum can be used to more than or for more than api token authentication to discover the true power of Sanctum, you can visit the Laravel Sanctum documentation on the official Laravel website and I leave links in the description down below. Now that you know how to authenticate users using session-based authentication and token-based authentication and how to use the Remember Me functionality, you are one step closer to building fully functioning web applications using the Laravel framework. In the next lessons, we are going to take further steps on this path and discover more functionality and more packages. See you then.